Hi guys, this is Oilquip with our technical training video series. Uh, this video is going to be on how to read hydraulic symbols and hydraulic schematics. Uh, part 1 is going to be on miscellaneous components and system accessories. Later parts will dive more into specifics such as check valves, directional valves, and, and symbols we used uh, more often. And then we'll wrap up with the, the last part will be how to read hydraulic schematics as a whole. Uh, as a side note, uh, symbols for hydraulic schematics are defined by ISO 1219-1. In general, oil quip follows these standards, but we do deviate some. That being said, we'll go ahead and uh, dive into our first symbol. Our first symbol here is a hand pump with uh, two check valves, one on top, one on bottom. Uh, the symbol is easy to remember. Uh, you can kind of think of it as just like a hand pump operates when this handle comes backwards. Flow can come in through this check valve and fill this cavity, uh, but flow cannot enter this check valve. And then when the handle gets pushed out, this check valve is now blocked and this cavity empties itself out of the top check valve. Again, in later videos, we'll go into exactly what a check valve does and, and, and the symbol for it and, and how we can think of how those operate. But this is uh, the symbol for a hand pump. This next symbol is a heater. Uh, this is a basic symbol. We can think of this box as an electrical enclosure. And these lines here represent um, the resistor or the actual uh, immersion heater section that, that's heating your oil. Uh, this is your reservoir tank or your return. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this on, on a hydraulic schematic as a, a big uh, box on, on the bottom of your, of your screen or of your uh, drawing. And uh, this is a local return. So a lot of times to save space or, or to keep drawings organized, uh, we can draw just a local return uh, that way we don't have to draw tank lines all the way back down to the bottom of the page uh, just to show that something's going back to tank. An example of this would be like a directional valve. Our P port's here and our T port is here, our tank port. Rather than drawing a line going all the way down the page and making things end up looking like spaghetti, we can just draw a simple local return. That represents we're going back to tank but um, in a simplified manner. Uh, next symbol here is a three-way ball valve. An easy way to remember this is flow can come in through the bottom and you can choose which direction it goes. You can either travel left or you can travel right. That brings us to two-way ball valves. Uh, a two-way ball valve filled in would be a normally closed ball valve and uh, a hollowed out ball valve symbol would be a normally open ball valve. But again, these are just two-way ball valves. They're either open or closed. Uh, normally closed ball valves you would see on like block and bleed circuits um, and a normally open ball valve would be something like on a suction line, maybe a flooded suction. This is a symbol for an orifice. Uh, an orifice is basically any small hole or small diameter um, allowing uh, flow, flow to pass. Uh, if it was a variable orifice, you would see an arrow going through here. Uh, so in this case, this is a fixed orifice or a, an orifice with a fixed diameter. I uh, threw that in there because a flow meter kind of looks like an orifice uh, turned vertically. Um, this is just a simple symbol, nothing really complicated about it. A thermometer, again, um, you have your basic ring with a thermometer. Uh, looks like a your basic mercury style thermometer. And then a thermostat looks like a thermometer with a switch up top. And uh, basically you, you have a detector or some type of bulb that is sensing fluid temperature. When a temperature reaches, uh, reaches a certain set point, the switch flips and, um, and you, you've activated some type of motor or some, something to, to start cooling. Uh, we often see this connected to the motor of a, an air oil heat exchanger. Um, and this motor turns a fan 
and as oil passes through this heat exchanger, it begins to cool. Uh, next symbol here is, is similar. It's a pressure switch. So we're detecting pressure right here at this connection point. When a certain pressure is reached, this switch flips. Uh, this spring setting with the arrow going through it says that the setting at which this switch flips is variable. We can choose when that happens. And this is a level temp switch. Uh, we use these this symbol specifically here at, at Oil Quip. Uh, I like to think of the, the left side as the, the temperature side, um, or the level side. As level comes down in the reservoir, this goes from a normally closed switch to a normally to an open. And then I, th I think of this side as the temperature side. As, as temperature rises, this goes from normally open and then closes. Uh, this is a filler breather cap uh, that you see on your reservoirs a lot. Uh, it's a basic symbol of a filter with a, a cap on top. And this is an accumulator. Uh, this would be like a, a bladder accumulator or a, uh, a gas over oil accumulator. The hollow arrow up top represents a, a gas, and, and because this is an accumulator, we would obviously be talking about nitrogen. But uh, you'll see this on, on pumps as well. Uh, a hollowed, hollowed out arrow on a pump would mean it, it's some type of air pump or... Um, but, and a filled-in arrow means it's a hydraulic pump. Uh, but oil would be on this side of the accumulator, and, and this would be uh, the nitrogen up top. This is a basic symbol for a gauge. Uh, this would be maybe a vacuum gauge or a pressure gauge, but there's only one sensing port here. Um, the differential gauge is similar, but it's going to have two sensing ports to tell you the difference between the high and the low pressure. This is a gauge with a hose. Uh, a lot of people use this because it uh, gives them some type of quick connect or, or, or uh, some way to just uh, tap into a system really quickly and uh, measure a certain point. This is a gauge with a snubber. Uh, really, the symbol here is a symbol for a, a, a needle valve. Again, the, the arrow through the needle valve represents that it, it is a variable orifice size, meaning you can control the flow. But because this is attached to a gauge, we, we end up just calling this a gauge snubber. It's a way to protect your gauge uh, if, if you think you might exceed the pressures that the gauge can read rather than pegging out the gauge. Uh, this would be a water-cooled heat exchanger. Again, the filled-in arrows means you're dealing with a liquid, and um, your oil is coming through these ports through the heat exchanger. And this would be a, a water-modulating valve over here. Uh, you have your thermometer. Uh, that would normally be sensing your oil temperature. And as your oil temperature rises, this valve begins to open and you begin modulating the water coming in and out of your heat exchanger. Uh, this arrow up here on your spring denotes that the temperature, that you can vary at what temperature this valve begins to open. And I think that's it for now, and we'll uh, go to part two.